welcome back to Best Life and Beyond Big Disneyland update. Oh yeah, we have a lot to share with you today. Oh yeah, one of the updates is so big that I'm gonna wait to tell you. Uh, but first thing, we we took the tram in, got off here at Downtown Disney, and look at this, Earl of Sandwich is back open. It's this new satellite version. Uh, it's a temporary location, but it's back nonetheless. Yeah, we actually get to have some Earl of Sandwich. Uh, you'll be able to get it to go, and you can get it sit down, which is really cool. Earl of Sandwich. It is in the old La Brea Bakery building, but again, that's only a temporary location for Earl of Sandwich because eventually that's going to become Porto's. So we don't know exactly how long this is going to be here for. So if you're in the mood for an Earl of Sandwich and you're on the West Coast, Right now is your time to get it. It really is. Uh, they've got a big queue kind of lined up every day that I've seen it open. It's, it's only been, been a few huge, days. Yeah. The line is massive. Uh, everybody loves Earl of Sandwich. It's a great grab and go. We love the food. We always have. So glad to see it back. Me too. Okay, folks, we are standing literally right in the middle of both parks here in the Mumpus. And our starting park today was DCA. It is now 12 in the afternoon, so theoretically, we should be able to park up and start over at Disneyland because after 11 a.m., after today, park hopping's at 11 a.m. So let's go see if it works. So it's really cool for that reason that no matter what your start park is, if you get here and it's 11.01, you can go to either park now. You don't have to go check in at the other one, uh, you know. I think at Walt Disney World, they have to uh, check in at their starting park, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So I'm curious, though. Let us know in the comments, what do you think of the whole park hopping thing? Do you think it is so pointless? Do you think, like, there's a reason? Um, let us know your opinion. We like to read them. All right, we made it in. Success. And it's what time? It is officially 11.32. There you go. I thought it was 12 in the afternoon back there, but it is 11.32. It's not even 12 yet. Now, I was, <laughs> I was thinking that, you know, it does have a benefit for, let's say you start at Disneyland and you want to maximize for those first couple hours and you don't have, you know, the influx of people from DCA coming over yet. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I mean... It's really hard to say because I think every day is like a different amount of people, but I just hope they get rid of it. Um, and Walt Disney World, I think during the week, excluding Magic Kingdom, they get to, if you're an annual pass holder, you get to not even make a reservation at, after two o'clock. It sounds so insane, but it's like Disney, just bring it back to how it was. Yeah. But we'll see. I mean, time will tell. Yeah. Uh, for now though, we better get in the park we got a lot to do and a lot to see, a lot of ground to cover, and so little time to do it. So the Mickey is still Mickey is still filling in over here. I know, it's, it's getting uh, like it very needs more time. filled in. But I mean, with all the rain we had, I imagine yeah. that thing's going to bloom out pretty nicely. Right, for sure. All right, as we make our way into the park, make sure and subscribe to Best Life and Beyond. Hit that notification bell. We would love to have you. Okay, before we get to the end of Main Street, we wanted to show you guys something that I kind of asked for a while back, and they did it. Not that it had needed me to prompt it or anything. I'm sure it was already <laughs> in the works. These things take a while, but check this out. It's the 100th collectible medallions, right? Check it out. Oh, that's cool. Are you trying to say your wish came true? It did. Yes, absolutely did. Look at that. Oh, these are cool. So there's four different coins. Six bucks each or four for 20. Could do Mickey and Minnie, Donald and Daisy, looks like Goofy and Pluto, and Chip and Dale. How cool is that? And then right next door at the Candy Palace, check it out. Fresh strawberries about to be dipped right there. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. That looks so good. There's some that are already... There's the end result right there. And it looks like she's striping them with some dark chocolate and white chocolate. Yeah. And if you are into chocolate treats and everything at Disneyland, make sure you check out our Valentine's Day food guide. It's pretty much all the yummy treats throughout the month of February here yeah. at Disneyland. It involves a lot of that right there. <laughs> a lot of that. A lot of the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and as we approach the castle... I'm sure you can hear them, the band. We caught it in one of our last vlogs, one of our recent ones, but they are now performing in front of the castle again. And it's really cool. Sometimes they'll have characters with them and they'll play the appropriate songs. Wondrous, they're playing Wondrous. 
they are playing Wonders. I knew I recognized that tune. And then they'll march down Main Street after this, so it's pretty cool. And then here come the characters. They're about to do their uh, their march, the happiest march. <laughs> March along with the band. Um, I love it. That's so great. And I love seeing them in their 100th costumes. I know. And speaking of marching, we're going to march our way right into Adventureland. Woohoo! Lots going on yet again. It's been really bizarre lately at Adventureland, purely because it's been blocked off. Literally, right here, there was big walls. Oh, yeah. You could only take a small channel up to Bengal Barbecue on this side. And if you notice right in front of Jungle Cruise, look at the. Uh, the ground has been uh, just fixed. colored, repaved. Looks like they did some plumbing or something. I don't know, but you can see the difference. Wow! And they haven't like given it any theme yet, because eventually they probably will. You I think noticed so? they, yeah, I noticed they do this first, and then they'll come in and lay like a theming texture. But really, I don't think they're gonna take that time. Maybe and they close won't. I don't know. Again. They usually do, but anyways. Wow! Regardless, look at the contrast. Yeah, the contrast is interesting. I feel like they're gonna fix it yeah so it's the ground all the way up to Indy so I'm imagining they did some subterranean work uh, they had to have and I love this side coming soon temple tours will begin again this spring courtesy of temple of the forbidden eye but yeah there you go hey we have a message from Sala Katie join me on a most splendid tour no no that's tour. not how he says it he goes join me on a most splendid tour of the temple of the forbidden eye right isn't that how he says with it with an opportunity to partake in the favored blessings of Mara, eternal youth, great wealth, or a glimpse into the future, what could be more delightful? Tours begin in spring of 1935. Sala. He would say, spring of 1935. <laughs> you sound, I don't know who what I sound like. Who sounds worse, I don't you know. or me? We have another notice here. No items may be removed from this site without written permission from Dr. Henry W. Jones or the Board of Regents of the Archaeology Department, Redford, Connecticut. Oh, wow, wow. yeah, so. They've got a some serious warnings. They've got a stake to that claim, and there's another one over there. Says same the thing. same thing. Yeah. yeah. All right. Oh, I can't wait. I'm getting like for real Indiana Jones hype. Dude. What about you? Temple of the Forbidden Eye. I'm totally into this. We also wonder if they're gonna change it for the new movie. Like if they'll make changes that are you appropriate know, to the new appropriate movie. Appropriate to yeah. the new movie. Now all this work and chaos has probably been upsetting our dear friend here. Uh, did they add, did they change this root system or is this looking the same to you? I don't know. We're going to have to like look back. I, I mean. I think that, you know what? This looks a little more pronounced. I think that the wall used to go across because people would sit here. I don't think we had roots coming out. This looks very new to me. Really? Yeah, because people well, would always also... sit there. All they did was take the fence down and then it made a place for people to sit. Didn't they also come out with another Patrick Pagora book? They did. So uh, maybe... We might have to get the book. I don't know, but but the reason I like this is because a lot of times I would come here to check in on Patrick, and people would be sitting here because there was a break in the fence, yeah. and they had no idea it was back there, so it's right. not their fault. But it was always like it became a, a kicking spot and a stroller spot. Now, it's going to be hard to sit there. Yeah. It's, uh, painful, I would I would imagine. Do you, think, do you think Patrick did this? Probably. Let's see. Let's look in. Oh, wow. They redid his little... Look at that. His little window, like, remember with the, like, they redid it. Yeah, they redid it because before it had the thatching. So now, now it's it looks just way like better, that. and you can't remove it. Yeah. That looks a lot better. So, anyways. Let's see if his door actually is redone too. His door is actually redone too. Yeah, and Patrick, his light looks better. Patrick got a little remodel. That was that was why they had all the big walls up. It was just for that reason. It was all for Patrick yeah. the whole time. Who'd yeah. have thunk? Patrick, are you stoked about that? 
Oh, Katie, I hear you out there. Be still me heart, Katie. Come in and give me a kiss, Katie. No, thanks, Patrick. Oh, Not happening. Katie, you should see what they're doing to Indiana Jones. I have, I have heard some things that I can't tell you. I signed oh. an NDA. That's a non-disclosure oh. agreement, Katie. <laughs> I know. We have those in Ireland as well. Okay. Well, I like the upgrades you got to your place, Patrick. Oh, thank you. You should see the inside, Katie. Come no, on in. I'm Give me good. a kiss. Nope. No nope, thanks. No. Nope. Oh, Katie. <laughs> and right next door, the Adventureland Treehouse, inspired by the Swiss Family Robinson, still, still underway. But what we did notice was that the ground down in front here has been altered. So we have. This texture has been like this for a while. This is what I call the parking garage texture. Uh, this seems to be added. These uh, kind of flagstone looking deals. It's kind of weird. Do you think that that's what separates Adventureland to New Orleans Square? This could be the demarcation spot. This is it. Although you would think it would be a little bit farther. Because? Because the treehouse is the Adventureland treehouse. But it's a tree. Like you could just say, oh, it's a tree. Like it's a perfect blend. Unless the entrance is going to be right here. Could be. Now, another question I have, do we think that there is a chance that the treehouse will open when Indiana Jones does? Oh, I don't know. I feel like that's a kind of a safe bet. Now that I'm like sitting here thinking about it. All right, crossing the Pirates Bridge. Look at all the activity going on. You got the Columbia, the raft. I love seeing that. And the Mardi Gras vibes continue here in New Orleans Square. Oh, yeah. Royal Street being the center of the activity. And of course, you gotta make sure that you come into French Market before it goes down for its uh, switchover. It's reimagining for Tiana's place. And you gotta make sure to come listen to some jazz while you're over here, it's a must. I'm sure that that's something that'll be implemented when Tiana's Place uh, comes back around. We definitely won't have it on that stage uh, during the, the switchover, but maybe they'll play somewhere in New Orleans Square because those guys are too good. And it looks like they're still working on that building at the New Orleans Square station for the Disneyland Railroad. They had a little fire uh, not too long ago. And uh, so hopefully we'll see that back in action soon. And our beloved Haunted Mansion is down for refurb. They're switching it over from Haunted Mansion Holiday back to the OG. There hasn't been anything super concrete as far as the date it comes back. We've heard February 10th. Uh, that's the rumor going around. So hopefully that's the case. We'll keep our eye on it. If you hear anything, let us know in the comments. I do love the sign though. It says the Haunted Mansion is unavailable while our silly spooks are out living it up. Please visit other spirited attractions in New Orleans Square. Uh, and then look at, I love how it's a face. It's so cool. And speaking of not knowing any dates, we still don't have an actual definite date for Splash Mountain when that will go down permanently to become Tiana's Bayou. I can't wait to see that attraction. Right now, currently on a Saturday, this is about a 40 minute wait and we are in February. So clearly people don't mind getting soaked in February. No, but it is a nice day, so I, I get it. It is a lovely day. It's actually pretty warm for February. But I'm just really excited. I think Tiana's is gonna be so great. Yeah, I mean, one thing's for sure, you're still gonna have that death-defying drop that everybody screams on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's really the selling point, right? Uh, that's still gonna be there. Right. Uh, so that's cool. People will still get that thrill when they walk by and hear people screaming like, oh man. Yeah, there's something fun about that. And then just seeing like, the lights at night I think are gonna be awesome but you know you want to know what I thought would be really cool is what if like you know on Incredicoaster how you can smell the cookies on Jack oh, Jack yeah, yeah. what if they have like beignet scented you know what I mean like how cool would that be they might I mean you uh, know. I think that would just be the coolest thing you never know that I, could that could happen so. I don't know I'm so excited I think this attraction is gonna come out great and I often wonder what's gonna be the fate of the old Critter Country sign and our little Critter friends I mean is it still gonna be called Critter Country or are they gonna stick it further back in there next to Winnie the Pooh I mean what what will become of that sign right because are they are those critters actually part of the movie 
they I don't know. They kind of do because you got rabbit, bear, and fox up there. Oh. Okay. So they're they're renditions of them, I think. So I don't know. Okay. I mean, or are they just random critters? You know, one could say. <laughs> they, I mean, they could be. It's just that. Uh, will it become part of Yesterland? That sign. Will it go to auction? Oh man. Who knows, man? Oh, that's a crazy thought. So take in your critter country sign until. As much as you can, I guess, is what yeah, I'm trying yeah. to say, yeah. But whatever happens, we're here for it. We're excited either way. All those details, we love to see how they play out, you know, including where the sign goes, if it stays, I don't know. All of it's fun, and we're very excited about Tiana's coming in, so keep you posted. I did like Katie's idea of turning Hungry Bear into Tiana's place. Yeah. Uh, but I think the idea is that that is, they would have to redo that whole place because it's so, like, you know, it's right. so critter country with the, with the logs and the, it feels like it belongs in the woods, you know? Yeah, either way, I'm happy Tiana is getting a restaurant in general. Yeah. Location-wise, I would have preferred overlooking her attraction. Of course. But at the same time, it does work because you have Eudora's shop over there and it yeah. literally is New Orleans Square. Exactly. So it fits either way. Okay, we're on our way to Galaxy's Edge and you know which update we're approaching. Oh no. That we have to check every time. Oh boy. You guys know what it is? I know. It's the Hungry Bear Hive Reach 2023. <laughs> uh, he's still reaching. He, but the good thing is he has not fallen. Yeah. Maybe, maybe he has and we didn't see it overnight. Uh, but he's dangling precipitously. He is, uh, he is determined. He's gonna get that honey. He he's is. gonna get that hive. Stay tuned to Best Life and Beyond. Subscribe. We'll keep you updated on this, this uh, breaking news, this uh, ongoing dilemma for this poor bear. Uh, maybe it's a different bear. I don't know. It, Who knows? It, each day, but. Uh, I think if a bear would have gotten it by now, the hive would not be intact. It would be on the ground. There'd be a mess. Right. They're not the most tidy creatures. Yeah. Uh, but anyways. Good keep, luck, bear. Keep you updated. It's always cool to, to see the train go by right there. Right, it is. Uh, just I love because it. it's the uh, you know the two worlds kind of colliding in a sense. So it's a beautiful blend, they say. As we approach rise of the resistance, we wanted to see. We were curious with the advent of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway now being here. Will it affect the rise? crowds the rise effect as I call it sometimes uh, that's the thing I've been most anticipating and also bear in mind it's a Saturday the day that we're filming this so this is a good day to judge day to check. oh boy you know it's what only 55 I think you're right I know it's hard to see it in the camera but that's 55 minutes that is definitely that's changed. That's a Mickey and Minnie's effect. Yeah, normally that'd be like 95. Yeah, no, um, definitely like a minimum of 95. So speaking of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, what I want to share with you is I woke up very early today and at seven o'clock on the dot, I got a boarding group for Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway for the two of us. Um, and I just want to share that with you right now so you can see just how fast that went. Now, there is another time to try it at 1 p.m., but just be advised, your party that you want to get on the attraction with have to be scanned into the park. Otherwise, you can't make a boarding group at 1. Now, let's just say you really, you're here for one day and that's the one attraction you want to get on. Don't gamble on that virtual queue. I hate to say it because I don't want to encourage spending money when it's already so expensive here, but truth is, just by the individual lightning lane. It's gonna be your best bet, your safest bet, and you'll be a lot happier. And it's also worth noting that you can buy it and then try for the virtual if you want to. Yeah, so oh, get a good idea. You can get a second run at it because there's so much stuff in the queue and so many Easter eggs that it, it takes a couple of go-throughs to like spot things, right. uh, unless you've spoiled it and watched a video. But uh, yeah, that way you can kind of double down and, and maybe get two passes at the most popular and new attraction here at Disneyland. So. That's true. Plus that when you're actually on the attraction, depending on where you sit, you're going to kind of get a little bit of a different experience. So that's oh, yeah. a good point of trying to go twice. But again, the whole point, we just want to make sure that we let you know if that's really what you want to do, just buy the lightning lane. Check it out. They put benches along this path now. Oh. Uh, the path that I've always said has no purpose. 
the path with no purpose now has a purpose. <laughs> it's got uh, a yeah. seating purpose. You can sit here and listen to all those weird sounds that are coming out of the, whoa, see? It's oh, <laughs> was it a human child or was it something from not on this planet? I was think the latter. Here? Folks playing the bounty hunter game, it's still popular here. Uh, I hear a lot of good feedback about it. Have you also heard that the lightsabers back here have gone down in price, like at Savi's workshop you mean thing? The experience to build one or just yeah. to, oh, okay. Yeah, I heard that it was like went down by like 30 bucks. It's just a rare thing that happens at Disneyland. <laughs> right. Price cutting? What? Yeah, what? We appreciate your support. So I was so intrigued and I wanted to know and I looked it up. It says Savi's workshop. The prices have dropped from 250 to 220, and then the droid building experience that's in here is now $100 down from $120. Okay. So there you go, price drops. What? Check out that stormtrooper up there, keeping a, a bird's eye over this side of Galaxy's Edge. But I have to say, I feel like this this land could use more characters. Like you know the amount of characters that you see in Disneyland on on the daily. There should be more because. When you see Kylo or something, he just gets mobbed. I mean, it's just, you know, there should be like, you know, Chewie should be out. He should be out. There should be tons of stormtroopers. I just feel like they've just undercut the character thing here at Galaxy's Edge. I would like to see more. And I think being on another uh, planet, that's what you would see is, you know, this is supposed to be like a spaceport, like a deep space outer rim. Right. You know. Uh, We're not even on Earth anymore. Right. This is like the truck stop uh, of, of the Outer Rim. So anyways, I just would love to see more characters. What do you guys think? As well as the fact that, like, take the canon thing out of it. Like, just put any Star Wars character over here. I don't think kids care. No one cares. There's like five people who are like, oh, they have, oh, they, he wasn't, he died in that episode. He wasn't there for, no one cares. We just want to see characters in Galaxy's Edge. That's it. Like, we don't have to make a big deal about it. Bring Darth Vader over here. People would be so hyped. All right. We're headed back to Earth. And the update that only Best Life seems to care about. The stagecoach dilemma continues. Three boxes, nondescript. I mean, at least put some, like, you know, stencils of, like, numbers on there. They're Easter eggs of something. Something, except for just three random boxes. It's just weird. I don't know. What, what did you do with our old Knott's stagecoach? Where is it? Oh, it's the applause box. It's back, Katie. I love the applause box. Yes. <laughs> That's like one of the most. Oh, Captain Hook, too. Captain Hook, do it. Do it. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Woo. Very good, very good. All right, everyone. <gasps> Yay. Oh, Katie's messing with him. They're too good for you, Katie. Oh. oh my god. Oh. oh. All right, all right. Okay, thanks guys. I like this small world uh setup for the uh on the stage where this is where Fat Cat plays for Sweetheart's Night. Yeah, the Royal Ball, probably the best part of Sweetheart's Night. If you want to see that video, make sure to check it out. We have it. But this is a cool setup for the daytime. I wonder if I could just have this. If I could buy it. I like the goat up there. Heck yeah. He's precariously sitting there and then TikTok is looking at him. Oh yeah. It's really cool to see an area that was so <laughs> avoided for so long now being so active as Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is open to the public. But that's it. No Roger Rabbit yet, no Toontown yet. Just Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, and it's very popular. So much so that it's affecting other ride times in a good way. Uh, you know, we saw a rise at 55. I mean, that's for a Saturday? Are you kidding? Even Matterhorn, not too bad. The line's only coming to here, normally it would go further down. All right, Tomorrowland. Let's see what's going on over here. I think we got some new paint that we're gonna check out. Very exciting stuff. For reasons unknown. <laughs> and we noticed the old people mover skeleton has yeah, been look painted, at the and you can see it's not done yet, but they're working on it. Looks like that's the new paint on that side. Uh, Katie was asking me, why would they do that? Why don't they just knock it down? Well, they still have to make it look nice uh, because it right. does have a futuristic look to it. 
so and it still serves a purpose and yeah. aesthetically speaking right and they don't want the place to, to look run down that's what walt always said he didn't want it to look like right. a seedy amusement park and i just so, and i mean i guess they're not gonna bring back people mover which i mean it's wishful thinking but it's just not gonna happen yeah it's, i mean i know it is weird that they paint it it's like it is odd yeah All right, guys, well, that's going to wrap it up. Hope you guys enjoyed the update. Park hopping now, 11 a.m., which is huge. We're, we're all about that. Yeah, definitely making a difference. Hopefully, it'll all go away soon, but this is a step in the right direction, we like to say. The video I want to make is reservations are going away at Disneyland. <laughs> Let's I all manifest it. I can't wait to make that video because one day we will make that video. <laughs> Someday your dream will come true. That's right. If you enjoyed this video, you can let us know by giving it a thumbs up. And don't forget, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks to our Patreons. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you next time on Best Life and Beyond. Bye-bye, everybody.